I've had a look at what these standard shafts do in the Cleveland full face wedges. I want to see what tiger stepping does for me and the performance of my wedges. Now there was a review a short while ago with tiger stepping and it did a load of testing on a 60 degree wedge and it showed a massive increase in spin from that wet from that wedge on full shots i want to see what tiger stepping my whole set of wedges does for the flight of the ball and the spin rates for example because i want to see if it tops out at a certain point i want to see if it gets to a point where it stops increasing spin i've hit some data here with my full set of wedges so i've got a full set here including the pitch and wedge from my set of irons 60, 56, 52, and there's a 46 which I've actually bent to 48, and then my pitching wedge. So the yardages are quite nice actually in terms of increments, it's just a little bit tight here. What I think might happen is that these yardages go up in the bottom three wedges and actually allow me to take this wedge out entirely. But we'll see how we go and, and review what the differences are. So far I've got 139 carry with the pitching wedge, which is only one yard different from my last set of testing. Um, set of distance gap testing 139s with 9650 spin on the 48 i've got 131 carry with 9780 spin the 52 119 yards carry with 10760 spin the 56 is 108 carry with 12080 spin and the 60 is 97 carry with 12360 spin so what I find with these shafts is they're just that little bit soft for me, so I, f I feel like the variance just spreads that little bit too much. So the shaft's bending and releasing a little bit inconsistently for me. So I wanna see what the distance does, what the spin does, and what the dispersion does. What I predict is that the dispersion's gonna get much tighter, but we shall see. The pitching wedge is not getting reshafted. Here's one of my workbenches, and I'm gonna go wet towel around here to protect the ferrule. Heat the neck from here. Bish, bash, bosh, and the final head. So we have all four heads removed. Now the shaft that I'm gonna put in these clubs is one step heavier and one step stiffer than what was in there already, and in eight iron shaft. So I've got four dynamic gold eight iron shafts in X100. These are gonna go in there, and basically because they're a heavier shaft, we actually cut more length off because it's going into a wedge, so they play lighter, but they're very stiff. And the idea is that the shaft doesn't bend as much, so it presents less loft to the ball, so it launches lower, which in theory grips the face better because it's got more push on the face instead of add adding loft and glancing off through the ball. So let's get these shafts in and we shall see what they do. See you shortly. So I've finished building the shafts and I've hit some shots to test and the results are quite interesting for me. Firstly, I did a little bit of custom work on the cosmetics of the club. I added a bit of white and red because I had some white and red ferrules hanging around. And then I went for the red and white MCC grips just to add to the look overall. The only thing I can't find at the minute is the X100 shaft labels. I'm sure they'll pop up somewhere in the workshop. So it's a bit of a weird one. So with the 46, which is actually bent to 48, I gained 1100 spin, but I lost three yards of carry, which might actually blend, it actually blends a little bit better from the pitching wedge because it just takes the edge off it because it was a little bit tight to the pitching wedge from the set of irons that I have. So it just separates them a little bit more, which is very nice and it spins like bilio compared to the previous shaft. The, the 52 gained 120 revs of spin, so marginally gained a little bit of spin, but it actually gained two yards. So again, that just brings that a little bit closer to the 48. So 52, 56, and 60 are all in the full face, and then the 48 is, is just the standard zip core wedge. So there we have plus two yards and plus 120 spin with the 52. Go to the 56, and I've gained 280 spin. So again, it's not a massive amount. It's not the 2,000 I was kind of fishing for, but we'll take it. We'll take that extra little bit of spin. That also gained two yards on average, so it just holds that carry just that little bit more and it actually puts it to a round number 110, which is quite a nice number for me to work out on the course when I'm hitting my long shots into my wedge zone. And then the 60 actually lost a little bit of spin, which is my biggest surprise. It's lost 140 revs, so again, it's minimal. It's not 
it's not the end of the world. I'm not going to build. I'm not going to rebuild them back to the old shafts for the following reason. And the carry yardage was exactly the same, 97. So I haven't changed any yardage in this one. Is my dispersion with these clubs, albeit I've hit them all just a little bit left of centre, if anything. Uh, maybe I just need to sort the line angle out because I normally like it a little bit flatter, but they've been standard the whole time. My dispersion reduced massively. So my front to back difference in yardage, the numbers that come up on the variance on here are zero. So it's hitting within one yard, actually in reality, within one yard of the last shot. So when I go on the golf course and I go, right, this is going to go 110, it's going to go 110. It's doing the same thing repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And that's because the shaft doesn't move as much. It stays more constant through the ball. So in my opinion, I think everyone should have just a little bit stiffer in their wedges because you've got enough loft on the club to get the ball airborne but it just keeps your dispersion tighter. Now, if you've got graphite A-flex senior flex shafts, you don't wanna go extra stiff in your wedges, that's too much of a jump. But you might wanna go just one step up, you might wanna go steel regular in your, in your wedges, just to tighten up that dispersion compared to your irons. Now, this is my scoring zone, this is what I do with these clubs. And when I get runs of birdies, it's because I keep getting my tee shots into the area of these clubs. Not quite what I was looking for, only subtle changes in yardage. Gains in spin at the top end, actually, not the 60. Gain spin in the lower lofted clubs, which is not what I expected. I was expecting the opposite of that. I was expecting loads of spin here extra, and I was expecting less increases in spin up this end. It's actually fixed all of my gapping issues, or say issues, concerns, that I had within my own bag, and it was a fun exercise to go through. These are staying in the bag for the foreseeable. Enjoy your wedge game.